you an independent running gun videographer, filmmaker, after a wireless follow focus system that had a budget? Well, this small rig system might just be exactly what you're looking for, but there are a few quirks. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Horspool. I'm here in Edge Photography where I do lots of reviews, uh, adventure photography, videography, all that kind of jazz. Uh, so if it's the kind of thing you're after, do hit that subscribe button and definitely hit that thumbs up if you're appreciating this video as much as uh, the next person. But if not, then also leave a comment below and tell me what I can do to improve in the future. So first of all, a disclaimer, Small Rig did reach out to me uh, and ask if I would like to review this system, but they haven't seen this before it's going out to you, nor will they uh, have any input into what I have to say. So this is my total independent opinion, and there are some positives and there's quite a few negatives as well. So yeah, let's get to it. So why did I choose to get this kit? Well, I'm a massive fan of small rig products. I use them across all my uh, cameras, my Olympus, my Blackmagic, and I think they're great value for money and they're they have so many different things we can use to build up and modify your equipment. For me, I needed something really powerful, but small and very, very fast that could operate my uh, DZO Vespid Primes, uh, but also potentially operate on my stills lenses like my Sigma. And when I saw that the kits that were released uh, could have been like a, a single motor, single wheel operation or the handle or a multiple full fizz kit, I did opt for the larger kit that has two motors and the hand wheel and the hand grip, which I'll fill you in on why very soon. So I predominantly shoot by myself or with a small team, uh, but no first AC. The, the budgets of my kind of shoots aren't that big. So I'm doing everything myself. So I'm manually focusing and I'm moving the camera by myself and I shoot black magic so there is no autofocus. So when I got these DZO Vespid Primes as well they have a big focus throw and it was a little bit difficult to use to do this manually on shoots so I really was looking for a wireless follow focus system that could operate that but I just didn't have a huge amount of money. I also film a lot of automotive shoots so using a, an external rig with my DJI RS2 it's very very difficult to focus which we'll get into uh, very very soon as well but I needed a wireless follow focus system for that so basically I need something for my handheld and something for the automotive side. So I know I touched on before I use a Pocket 6K Pro, I also have a Pocket 4K and I use my OM1s from OM System or Olympus uh, as sometimes on my gimbal but basically I'm always shooting my Pocket 6K Pro handheld fully rigged up and I have my 4K or the OM1 on my RS2 and that will be the same for the automotive. Now I've got a fair few friends that have the Sony FX6 and other bigger cameras like the Ursa and the way I see them using their bodies was, was really to like sh almost shoot from the hip and have the hand on the right grip and I really like that kind of uh, that kind of setup and and position for holding the camera and I kind of thought when I saw this oh it comes with a handle and the, an attachment for that, I think I'll be able to do that as well. So in an ideal world, I wanted to use the handle on the right of my camera and potentially have the focus wheel on the left. So then I could focus with my right hand in one position if I needed to, or if I'm going down low, hold the top handle and focus with the left. Now I did reach out to Smallrig and ask if this was possible to use the handle and the focus wheel on the one motor. And they said they were unsure, but they tested it and said that it worked. But upon my testing, I found that you actually couldn't do this. They interfered with each other. So really you can only use either the wheel or the handle for one motor, which is fine. So when I first got the kit, I started to build it out and I've got the right handle uh, and I put it on the right hand side of the camera. Immediately I found that it was a little bit tricky here because I had to use the NATO rail and that was fine. The handle's quite far back and as anyone who uses a, a pocket camera, they know that the ergonomics is quite wide. So it already makes the camera quite wide. I wanted to move it, the handle a bit forward of the right grip, but this wasn't possible with what came in the kit, which is again, was fine. What I did find though is the right handle, it feels really, really nice, but it, very, very plasticky. And on the sides, it's more plasticky. It does have metal in there, but 
where the mount goes in the quarter 20 screw with the, the locating pin, when that attaches to the, the little clamp that comes with it and then attaches the NATO rail, there's a lot of play there. And my camera's not a big rig by any means. And I was really hoping that this would be solid enough for me to be able to hold onto the camera with one hand and just hold it to the side or operate, but, but really have a lot of weight on that handle. This is not the case. It actually creaks a little bit under the weight of my camera and that's not even just holding it. So I will not be holding the camera with this handle and it's really not designed for anything above a mirrorless camera, which is fine because I think that's how they market it. Uh, so if you're shooting a smaller camera like the FX3 or the A7S III or something hybrid mirrorless, I think it's gonna be great because you will be able to hold that weight and you could hold it with one hand. But for something the size of the pocket uh, and definitely anything bigger than that, do not use that uh, as a weight bearing item because it will snap. So despite this, I still did mount it on the right hand side of the camera. But I find that, that if I'm not using an easy rig or a cine saddle, having grip that is so vertical is really, oh, for a camera this size, is really, really tiring. It would be great to be able to have a handle that rotated a little bit like some of their other non-focusing handles, but it, you can't. It doesn't come with a rotating clamp, uh, which would have been really, really good uh, to include. So. What I did was I actually just gave away with having the right handle not there anymore. And I instead mounted my focus wheel, which is really, really smooth and big and just much like my mini follow focus that I had before. And I used this little um, clamp here that was included, mounted it to the top of my tilter cage. And I can actually now just use it as uh, a mini follow focus uh, manual one like I did before. And this then frees up also that handle that I can, can use on the left hand side if I wanted to, or have someone else pull uh, wirelessly using that little handle, or, or just not use it at all, which I think is what's going to happen with my handheld shooting. I'll just be using that uh, follow focus wheel. So while on the topic of that follow focus wheel, it works super smoothly, like it, it, it feels just so well made, apart from, the fact that you can accidentally pull the whole wheel off, which is fine because that's how it's meant to work, but there's not much tightness in there before that actually can be pulled off. So you need to be aware that it could get bumped off and you could actually lose that, or just don't pull on it uh, too hardly. I didn't have any issues with connecting the, turning on the follow focus wheel and connecting and calibrating through there. Everything happens super smoothly, really, really fast. Uh, it's actually surprising how fast this was. Again, I'm not gonna go through how everything's connected that because you can just go and look that up on other people's videos. This is how I've rigged it up and I'm finding that it actually does work really, really well because it is so fast and so smooth and really, really powerful. So going back to the handle, if you're planning on using this little bad boy on the left hand side of your camera, which it can be because you can mount on either side, but if you plan on using the power cable, which is USB-C to power the follow focus motor by the included ba uh, the battery in the handle, you won't be able to really because for some unknown reason, they put the USB-C port right where your hand goes. So effectively, you cannot hold onto this handle without holding onto the cable as well. Not so bad with the right angle cable, but if you're using any other cable as well, that's going to poke out and it's really a bad design flaw. I think they should have put that port up higher or in a different spot because effectively you can't use it that way. The right hand side's not so bad. I've got uh, little fingers and it kind of works, but again, it, I think it's much easier just to power it through the supplied NPF battery plate, which I find is fine. Or you can even power it uh, USB-C into straight into your camera, which I've also discovered is a really great way to minimize weight and cut out bulk. The only issue is when you turn the camera off, the follow focus motor turns off, that's fine. But when you turn it back on, there's no phantom power that kind of kicks in and, and turns your follow focus motor back on. So you need to turn that back on every time you turn the camera back on. Again, not too bad because the motor comes on really, really quickly. But in a really fast situation, you may forget to turn it back on and realize you've got actually no focus. Something to be aware of. A quick note on the Vespids though, if you are planning on shooting uh, 
With Vespered Primes, which I know a lot of people are as well, the focus gear and the aperture gear are so close together that the focus motor and the aperture motor, if you're using them together um, as a dual operation, won't sit together unless you're powering them without the supplied NPF battery plate because the battery plates are too wide, they actually hit and you won't be able to do it. So keep that in mind that you'll need to power by USB or DTAP or another method other than the NPF plate. Now the battery life of these things is outstanding. It's great that the, the focus wheel has an internal battery which lasts all day. I used it for six hours straight, left it on in between and I used like one bar. It, it, 100% confidence that this is going to last a day or more and charges super quickly over USB-C. So no issues on battery life there. Again, we can power the motor via the handle, which I haven't really done now because of that issue before with uh, where it mounts into the handle. But using those small little MPF battery, uh, batteries on it isn't a big issue for me. It adds a tiny bit of weight. Uh, again, not a big issue. A lot of people I've seen have whinged about that, but I think it's a great a great way of, of powering something cheaply. You can get those little Niwa NPF batteries on, on Amazon and they're cheap as chips, and they'll run that for hours and hours and hours, no issue. It would be good though if they managed to get that plate to sit a little bit more uh, in, in line with the motor rather than jut out a bit, but just a small annoyance. So the second reason I wanted to go with a system like this that had the dual motors was because I film a lot of automotive content. Now, using a, a car mount rig with my Pocket 4K is tricky because there is no autofocus. And what I've been doing is shooting this kind of stuff on a budget. I don't have big uh, wireless receivers and transmitters and first ACs and all that kind of stuff. I use the DJI RS2 Pro. I've got the Raven Eye and attach that to my Pocket 4K with a native micro four thirds lens. And I can't focus because as anyone knows, when you use Raven Eye, you can only use your phone to focus on the screen and it is really, really difficult and very, very difficult to get precise uh, focus pulls. Not to mention you're trying to operate the, the camera, sorry, the gimbal. So I wanted a follow focus system like this that I could use force mobile or the joystick on my mobile phone, but also use the handle attached to side and focus while operating the gimbal. So I can do this as one man band or use my tablet sitting in the back of the car and I'll be operating with my thumb on the joystick or force mobile and have a person sitting next to me using this or the focus wheel and pulling focus and we're gonna be on the same screen. Again, it's not ideal, you would see in a big budget kind of production, but we're doing this one, two people, really, really budget, not using any external gear apart from this focus system and the bare necessities. And it works, we get great, great shots that this way. I'm also going to be, in future videos, talking about my new electric motorbike and how we're rigging this up to be a camera bike and we'll be utilizing some of this kind of system as well. So if you're interested in seeing the build and how all of that is going, it's going to be coming out very soon. Make sure you hit that subscribe button or drop me a comment uh, on the kind of stuff you'd like to see for that. So one of the advantages of the small rig focus system is the really great range. 100 meters is quite a long distance, especially when I'm filming in a car and we're only maybe 20, 30 meters behind the subject. Or if someone's sitting on the back of the bike and focusing, we're, we're quite close to the subject or the subject's riding past. 100 meters gives us a great amount of range. And I have tested this out in the open and it's been really, really great. I am yet to test this in the city and really I can't make a judgment on how well this transmission uh, strength is going to be across all situations because every place that you go to, you are going to have to test for RF interference, Wi-Fi, all of that kind of jazz that's going to interfere with how uh, secure that connection is. And really all of those people talking about latency and, and connection issues that they've had, everyone is in a different situation environment, different shoot. You have to check this for yourself. 
So my overall thoughts on the small rig wireless follow focus system or fizz system have been really, really great. Everything works fast, everything's powerful, things are smooth, uh, it really helped with my Vespid Primes and all of this is so cheap. Like you have the option for three different kits, but every it's all under like 800 Australian dollars like for this whole system and we'll have a first AC operating with you with incredible range, incredible features. It blows my mind how Samori can package something into um, into a kit like this and have this many features. Yes, there are some quality concerns, particularly with this handle uh, and, and the strength of that. I, I just wish they didn't use plastic, they just at least put some metal on the side um, component there to make that a bit stronger. It'd be great to have that rotating handle option. But by and large, this is a budget kit. It comes with everything you need to get started straight out of the box. Um, I'm going to be purchasing maybe a few extra little pieces to make everything work. I won't be using the handle. That's fine. I was using just the hand stripe anyway from Small Rig, and this will be now used just for the automotive component or having a first AC uh, all myself in during interviews, just sitting there and being able to focus my second camera. I don't even have to use two hands for that to work. I can just sit there and, and just make sure, have a look, check focus uh, in, my, in my monitor and adjust. So I know this wasn't a super technical review on all of the different features, but it's how I'm going to be using this moving forward. A lot of the time, if I don't like the product, I won't use it or I'll just send it back. I won't even review it. It's going to really help with my automotive stuff, which is all gonna be built on from now on. So I'm excited to see where this goes and you will see more of this system in my future videos, particularly around the automotive uh, side of shooting. So if you did like this, please give us a thumbs up or drop us a comment below on what you did or didn't like if you had any questions, particularly in related to using them with black magic. And I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. And on that note, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.